Am I getting drafted? <laughs> Bullying and no, it's not funny. It's, it's serious. People died from it. <laughs> hey Hi guys, guys. Welcome, welcome to About, about Ukraine. Ukraine. <laughs> so in this video, we're gonna talk about um, conscription in, in Ukraine and various army services and whether or not I will be drafted into the army and Irishka will be drafted into the army. So as you all know, Ukraine is at war with Russia for eight years now. And um, while Ukraine never really had conscription before 2014, in 2014, all males between the ages of 18 and 64 were asked to register in, uh, in the army commissariat in order to be put on reserve, essentially, so that the army can call on them to go fight in the war if it was necessary. But before I go any further, uh, I must say that uh, tourists, temporary residents in Ukraine, permanent residents in Ukraine are all exempt from doing this. This is all if you're a Ukrainian citizen or if you're thinking of getting Ukrainian citizenship and you definitely have to watch this video. So if you're a residence holder in Ukraine, you're a male between the ages of 18 and 65, uh, you shouldn't be worried that the army is gonna come to your door and knock it down and like look for you. So you have nothing to worry about. Uh, but if you're considering becoming a Ukrainian citizen with all its rights and privileges, you're definitely gonna find this video useful. So you may wonder, why would you even want to get Ukrainian citizenship? I can think of four reasons. I mean, the number one reason is that you're a stateless person, uh, you don't have a nationality, that's number one. Number two, you have a passport that's ranked lower than the Ukrainian one. There are many countries that are worse off than Ukraine. And then uh, number three is uh, you can marry a Ukrainian significant other, your other half can be Ukrainian. And the fourth reason is that uh, you want to breathe the fresh, uh, free air of Ukraine, not be a permanent resident and be a full-fledged Ukrainian resident. And that's another reason why you may want to get Ukrainian citizenship. So what does it mean to be a country of military conscription? Uh, it means that all males uh, up to the age of 65 must be registered at their nearest military commissariat office where they live so that the conscript pool can be big enough in case of a major war or uh, a very bad situation, let's just say. And it's not only about guys, but uh, <laughs> recently it started to be about wom women too. Yeah, so Ukraine is a country of uh, equal rights between men and women. And, uh, now uh, women also have to register to the nearest military office. And, uh, I read about that uh, it's uh, that they approved this order like in uh, 2021, but uh, it became known only now. And uh, it's included like 35 professions, musicians, uh, like teachers, like managers, office manager, uh, except of uh, monks and except of uh, women that go out all the time and uh, dancers in the nightclub. Yeah. yeah I've never heard <laughs> so of that. I maybe never heard of that. I have to have a new profession. Yeah, no, I don't know. I don't think so. I think either, either one sounds pretty bad. <laughs> All the women in Ukraine are shocked uh, about this information. So you have to register it in the nearest uh, military office. Yeah. And if you will not do this during like 2022, uh, then you will get a fine. And uh, it's uh, according to this order, yes, you can get a fine not only women, but uh, also organization uh, where this woman is working. So for example, if you work in some company, your company is uh, going to get the fine too. And I know that uh, the fine it's like uh, eight hundred like fifty grivnias for women, and uh, for an organization it will be like five thousand. But what happened was I think Ukraine just copied Israel because in Israel uh, you also have compulsory um, military service for women, and I believe it's like uh, between the ages of twenty to forty you can be drafted as a soldier and. Uh, I think uh, 20 to 50 as an officer, so basically it's like a higher rank. But uh, yeah, now Ukraine, uh, Ukrainian women can become soldiers and officers if they want, or if they maybe if even they if want, they don't want. If, <laughs> but uh, I think they will uh, make it like voluntary. I don't think that it's like purpose uh, 
of mobilization in this country or something like that. I think it's uh, only registration uh, and to be in their list. So country uh, have to know professions they can use. But uh, like uh, this the whole thing isn't finalized yet. It's not finalized. They're, they're gonna work out a bunch of uh, issues with it and they're gonna have to figure out how they're gonna like uh, how they're gonna medical uh, check for women how they're going to check them because like the right now the war commissariat um, office is all geared for men only right um, they have to really do like major changes they're gonna have to like install additional facilities buildings perhaps um, to accommodate like such a huge influx of, of people right so yeah let's just talk a little bit about the history of this military commissariat Essentially, it started in the Soviet Union, obviously. There was an institution called the Vtsik, which was responsible for gathering Red Army conscripts during uh, the Soviet uh, rule in Ukraine. And uh, basically, that conscription uh, was relatively short. It was supposed to be only for six uh, months, up to one year. But the Soviet Union back then, as you can imagine, had a huge population. It was like, I think the Soviet Union could afford to get like every single guy to, uh, to serve in the military for six months. You know. So why is the conscription in the first place? Well, the main reason is that there's simply not enough reservists or not enough soldiers to fight a uh, war on a contract basis, and they need to fill up these, uh, these spots. And uh, that is the reason why conscription exists in the first place. I mean, governments can spend more money and they can enroll more soldiers by, um, you know, opening up more spots in military colleges, maybe raising the salaries of the, of the soldiers, maybe offering them better working conditions. But uh, they don't do that and uh, the simple and easy and very convenient fix uh, is to just have mandatory conscription. So what do you think it means for foreigners that uh, want to come to Ukraine? Should they worry about uh, this conscription situation? Yeah, of course, if you're a foreigner, of course, you don't have to worry. A, a nice guy comes along from like America and like the girl, you have to, you have to live in Ukraine. I love Ukraine so much. And the guy's like, okay, I'm going to give Ukrainian citizenship. And then and what? Course, and then he's going to have to go to the yeah, army. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He will go to the army. I think so. Of course, uh, if you have like Ukrainian citizenship and you want to live here, of course you have to go because uh, you need your registration, uh, yeah. you need everything. So without military office, you can cannot do that. So in order to get a propiska or a registration, which is essentially a document that ties you to an address, uh, doesn't have to be necessarily the, your own um, piece of real estate, but it could be somewhere where you live. In order to get that from the service center, you have to get a propis noir, which uh, is something that the military commissariat gives out. So a propis noir is something that uh, you get from the military commission office that uh, puts you into the database. Yeah, after that you have to pass the med commission and it's a medical basically check of your health status, of your any like let's say psychological issues that you may have or like um, any injuries or sort of uh, trauma that maybe that you've had. And it's a pretty relatively honest thing. You can't really like bribe your way out of it like you used to before. So after you pass that, the situation can kind of transpire in two ways. You can either one be fit for military service, in which case you're gonna get a voyenne billet, or you're not fit for military service, in which case you're, you know, you're pretty much free. But the reality is the voyenne billet, the first one is, what I've been hearing from people is it's pretty much a death sentence. <laughs> it's like you're gonna have to be on call. I mean, you're gonna be the first one they're gonna call and you're gonna have to be ready. If you're not, it's gonna be like a criminal offense, right? If you mm -hmm. don't uh, respond to this uh, letter or this request to be drafted. Uh, uh, can you have some, like, for example, opportunity to go and uh, check out of uh, this military office? Yeah, if you have any kind of um, physical uh, stability or something like that, yeah, you can definitely do, do it that way. Yeah, it doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to see combat, you're going to see active combat in uh, the field. So whether or not you want to serve in the military, you're going to have to take those few months out of your life and uh, actually uh, be on call, be available, wherever it is that they want to send you, whatever it is they want to do, do with you. So if you're watching this, uh, it probably never really occurred to you that uh, a government can actually demand that you go uh, and fight, fight in an army for them against your will. But the reality is, uh, you would be right, because like in the US, in the UK, in the Western world, you don't have to do that. Um, I mean, like uh, many, many countries, like even in Africa, most countries in Africa do not have this conscription. China doesn't have it either because it's just there's so many people and it has such a huge army just because it has such a huge population. And India also doesn't have conscription, probably never will. 
And, and some countries like Uzbekistan, they have conscription, but you can pay them a thousand dollars and it's perfectly legal and you will get away from serving to the army. That thousand dollars is not really a bribe. It's like you basically pay for your time and uh, the government uh, can use that money for many things. Imagine that they get a lot of money from all these people who don't want to serve in the army. Now the government can take this money from everyone, right, who doesn't want to serve in the military and they can use it to improve the working condition, they can improve the general conditions, raise salaries for, for armed forces, right? So it's pretty mm -hmm. much a good thing and they don't have this in Ukraine. Yeah, so how do you think Ukraine will uh, get away from this law or not? Um, I think yes, but only after the um, tensions and the uncertainty from Russian side like gets eliminated. What problems? Okay. <laughs> uh, well, the first one is actually the one that my parents personally were extremely worried about. It's called uh, Dedovshina. Have you heard about it? Mm. Usually you have a two-term service, right? So basically the two-term service means that you have the first term, you have the second. It means that the second-term soldiers, what they do is they uh, bully the junior ones. They bully them, they abuse them, they can torture them, they can, you know, they can uh, give them, you know, yeah. give them harm. And that's why I think our guys uh, don't want to go to the army because... <laughs> Because the main reason is like this Dedovshina. Uh, basically, many people have died because of it. Uh, many people have went to court because of it. And there's really not a lot of um, a lot of feedback from the army about it. Simply because the army doesn't want to, you know, have a bad reputation. They don't want to like, they don't want to do. They, they don't want to admit this problem. And uh, I don't know how it is in Ukraine. I really don't. And uh, you think in Ukraine army now Dedovshina? I have no exist, no clue. No? But my my parents in the late 90s it was an extremely huge problem. In 2000s it was an extremely huge problem. I don't know about right now. There's no legal way to get out of this. Uh, you cannot pay anyone legally. You cannot like um, write like some sort of a uh, I don't know some basic uh, letter from your doctor saying that you're not fit for the army. Uh, you know, you have to go through the whole process, and it's it's a problem. It's a really big problem, and uh, I don't think it's uh, necessary in this day and age. It's really not necessary. Um, and the last thing is, if you're a Ukrainian citizen, and if you're a male between the ages of 18 and 65, you must go to the uh, military commissariat if you want basic human rights. If you want the right to get uh, registered to an address, if you want the right to get a driver's license, if you want the right to, you know, to get like a full spectrum of social services. And uh, if you don't do that, you're not going to get these social services and you're going to live like, uh, I don't know, you're going to be like half of a citizen, you know, mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, that's how it is. Uh, by the way, if you haven't noticed, uh, behind us is this military commissariat building in uh, central Kiev. And uh, in case uh, you do decide to get Ukrainian citizenship, you will have to show up to one of these lovely Soviet buildings behind me. Mm. So, uh, Irochka, I think we should wrap it up because you're very cold. And, yeah. um so hope Thank this video you. was useful and uh, like See and subscribe. You guys next time. See you guys next time. Bye bye. bye, -bye. Women yeah. and uh, all the women, women like uh, muse musicians, musicians. <laughs> yeah, why you said all the time my script? Okay, okay, fine. You told your script.